Okay, Tanya Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to the Prophet. Please accept my all glories to Prabhupada. Good to see you again. This is our third day of your portrayal of the seven primary temples of uh, Sri Vrindavan Dham. Thank you very much for all of your time. The uh, Some of our audience may not have seen the first and second uh, of those. So for that purpose, we'll give you, give them uh, just a brief introduction uh, to your holy self. Uh, of course, you are a, a GBC member, an initiating spiritual master. Uh, you've been a sannyasi since the early 80s, I believe. No, 94. 94, okay. And uh, and one of your, uh, I mean, of the, all, of the, all of the services that you do, you've attended uh, Vrindavan uh, pretty much every year since 1979, your first year being 76. Uh, many of those years you've been there two or three times. You are an excellent photographer, uh, often carrying a, uh, uh, a camera by your side. Uh, taking uh, super excellent pictures. And in fact, one of the things that I learned in watching uh, your uh, portrayal of these places is that you managed to get pictures of these glorious deities, uh, in many cases, very difficult to get, but somehow or other you managed to get them. Uh, of course, many, many temples, they don't like photographs, but you managed to get them. So, you know, so uh, without further ado, uh, we uh, um, uh, first uh, you showed us uh, on the first day. Which temples did you show us? On the first day, it was uh, Madan Mohan. We started with then Govinda. Yes, and then on the second day, then we went to Gopinath and Radha Damada. Mm, beautiful. And then today, what will we see? Well, today we'll start with Radha Sham Sunda. Mm. Then we'll go to uh, Radha Gokula Nanda, and mm. then we'll finish at Radha Raman. Beautiful. Okay, Maharaj, please begin. We'll be listening with rapt attention. Hare Krishna, thank you very mm -hmm. much, Gopal Bhatta Prabhu. Hare Bhatta. Yes, okay, devotees. So uh, this is the third day of our visit to the seven original main Goswami temples of Vrindavan. And uh, well, we just mentioned where we've been and where we're going this evening. Uh, it's, it's a really wonderful experience because, you know, in uh, Nectar of Devotion, there Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya actually tells us that Mathura Vas, to, to live in or to visit these sacred places like Mathura Vrindavan, this is really uh, one of the, the main parts of Krishna consciousness and one of the main ways to really reawaken and stimulate our dormant Krishna consciousness within. So, so this evening, as we, uh, as we said, we're going to the Radha Sham Sunda temple, the old Radha Sham Sunda temple. It's, uh, it's near Loi Bazaar in Vrindavan town. It was established originally by Shamananda Pandit. He's, uh, he's one of the you could say second generation, second or third generation of Gaudiya Vaishnavs. First of all, of course, there was Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, Advaita Acharya. Then there was the six Goswamis. And then Shamananda, that means he's third generation, actually. Uh, and he and Naratam Das Thakur, very, very famous and important devotee in our line. And also Srinivas Acharya, the three of them were the leaders of our Sampradaya after the six Goswamis. 
So he established this temple. Let's go in and have darshan. So here we see Radha Shamsunda, uh, these original deities. Well, not e they're original, but they're not from 5,000 years ago. The original deity we can't see here in this picture, uh, but don't worry, we'll be seeing him uh, just in a few minutes. Uh, but this this deity, this particular deity, was installed by Baladev Vidyabhushan. And uh, one thing we can note about these deities, Radha Sham Sunda in Vrindavan, is that they they are just about other than our own Radha Sham Sunda up in Raman Reti in our Iskon temple established by Srila Prabhupada, uh, these deities are worshipped and looked after and dressed just about the best. Radha Raman are very nice. We'll be seeing them later, as we mentioned, and we'll also see a number of photos of them Beautiful photos. But Radhasham Sunda, other than Krishna and Balaram, Radhasham Sunda Gornatai and Ariskon Temple, they're, they're right up there. They're just magnificent deities and they're really looked after beautifully. Uh, these photos, they're from different festival days in the Radha Sham Sunda temple. Yeah, really magnificent. Uh, Shringa, Puja. Yeah, they, they really, they really try their level best. And these are some small Radha Krishna deities, which are, they're on the main altar. When you, if you happen to go there, these deities are on our left of Radha, of the big Radha Sham Sunda. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, here we see uh, when when you go into the the actual temple room itself, and you're standing in front of the deities. Then to your right on the wall, there's the series of paintings depicting uh, the main scenes from the life of Shamananda Pandit. So here he is. He's a young, he's just a young fellow. Uh, he is on our right. They're the two devotees right in the center there. Shamananda is on our right. I don't know if you can uh, can read Sanskrit or Hindi, but it says there, Shamananda Prabhu. And just on our left, with his arm around the shoulder, uh, shoulders of Shamananda, is Hridai Chaitanya Adhikari Takua. That's what it says. Falguna Holy Puranima Ki Hridai Chaitanya Adhikari Thakur. Anyway, he is uh, he's giving it Diksha, it says. He's giving Diksha. Uh, Shamananda Prabhu is the initiated disciple of Hridai Chaitanya who's a really interesting person in his own right. And it says he's getting there. What does it say? Uh, um, oh, Ambika, um, oh, in, it happened in Ambika Kalna. In Ambika Kalna, may uh, Krishna, Krishna mantra, may Diksha. So he's receiving uh, initiation 
from Riddai Chaitanya in Ambika Kalna, uh, actually at the, the temple, yeah, at the temple of Gauri Das Pandit. And on the left, you can see there's Gornitai. That's a picture of the original Gornitai of Gauri Das Pandit. Okay, anyway, then Hridai Chaitanya, his spiritual master, sent Shamananda to Vrindavan to study Shastra and really, really learn the, the Gaudiya Vaishnav philosophy and culture from Srila Jiva Goswami. So here we are. On, our, on the right there, there's Shamananda Prabhu. He's just bowing down to offer a, his obeisances to Jiva Goswami, who's standing there with the shaved head and seeker, Sri Jiva Goswami. And uh, Jiva Goswami is going to accept him into his school, his school of Krishna conscious uh, Vaishnava philosophy and training. Um, and in, in the school on the left there, right on the left is uh, Srinivas Acharya. And just to our right of Srinivas is Naratam Takwa. They, they had already arrived and they were already being trained by Jiva Goswami when Shamananda came. So uh, Shamananda then, he became a, uh, a Siksha disciple of, uh, of Srila Jiva Goswami and learned everything from him. And here they are in the school. And uh, on the left, it's Srinivas. In the middle, it's Naratam. On, on the right or the top is Shamananda Prabhu. And there's Jiva Goswami. And it says there, Sri Jiva Goswami K. Uh, Nikat Bhakt Bhakti Grant. Uh, Adhyayan, uh, what is it now? Oh, Raghavan, is it? Raghavan, Raganuga Bhajan Shiksha. Anyway, he gave them training in all aspects of Krishna consciousness. Then here we see uh, during his stay there in Vrindavan, on the order of Jiva Goswami, Shamananda Prabhu went to Radha Kund. And at Radha Kund, he met, uh, just sort of leaning towards him a little, is Raghunath Das Goswami. And then on our left is uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. So Shamananda met them, got their mercy. Radha Kund is just right on the left there. Yeah, just right on the left is Radha Kund and Shama Kund. So then, so Shamananda just went and visited them to meet them and get their mercy. Then he came back to Vrindavan town, where Vrindavan town is now, to continue staying in, in the, the ashram of Srila Jiva Goswami. And as a, as a Siksha disciple, as a student under Jiva Goswami, Shamananda Prabhu was given the service uh, of cleaning in, this is Niduvan. This here it says here Niduvan me Sri uh, or Sri Mati Radharani ki. Uh, what is it now? Vamsachari ki. Any Rana Pua or her, her uh, Nupua. Yeah, her Nupua. Here is Shamananda finding the 
uh, ankle bells of Srimati Radharani in Niduvan. If you know where Niduvan is, it's just next to the Radharaman temple, right next. And it's kind of, it's very like Seva Kunj, if you're familiar with Seva Kunj, Seva Kunj is a little more uh, sort of popular and famous, but Niduvan, it's also a very special place where Radha and Krishna come uh, to rest after their rasa dancing past, pastimes through the, the evening and the middle of the night. In the very early morning, they come and rest in Niduvan. So Radha, Radha Rani had been there with Krishna and somehow or other, her nupur, uh, her nupur, her ankle bells fell off one of her ankles. And uh, Shamananda Prabhu found it there. There's, there's a bit of a long story behind what happens next is that Lalita Devi actually came. There's not a picture of this in, in the Sham, Shamsunda temple, but we, we've heard from the sources there. Lalita came and, and asked Shamananda, did you find some nupur? Did you find some ankle bells? And Shamananda said, yes, I did actually. And Lalita Devi said, well, can you give them to me? I'll take them back to the owner. And Shamananda, understanding what was going on, because look at the effulgence of these ankle bells, and, you know, they're obviously so, something very transcendental. Uh, yeah, so Shamananda, understanding this is a very special situation, he told Lalita Devi, don't worry, just take me to the, the girl who owns them and I will return them personally. So then Lalita took Shamananda to Srimati Radharani. And uh, here, when, when, when they arrived, when they arrived, then Shamananda Prabhu, suddenly manifested his gopi form. Uh, as you can see there, if you can read it, as a gopi, as one of the manjaris, Shamananda Prabhu is Kanaka Manjari. Kanaka Manjari. Here we see in the picture, there's, there's Indu Leka, Indu Reka, there's Champak Lata, Lalita, then, of course, there's Radharani Kanakamanjari. Then there's, uh, who is this? Vishaka, Sudevi, Chitra, and Tungavidya. I don't know what happened to Ranga Devi. Anyway, so there, there they are. And Kanakamanjari, Shamananda Prabhu, as kan Kanakamanjari, his eternal position. In Goloka Vrindavan, he is replacing the ankle bells on the uh, the left ankle of Srimati Radharani. So there you see it closer, putting the uh, the ankle bells on. Then, as Shamananda was putting the ankle bells on, Srimati Radharani intervened and Radharani took the ankle bells from Kanaka Manjari, Shamananda Prabhu, and pressed them against the forehead of Kanaka Manjari. And when Radharani did that, those ankle bells left a permanent impression, a permanent impression like tilak, 
on the forehead of Kanaka Manjari, Shamananda Prabhu. And when Shamananda Prabhu eventually came back to, you know, his regular position as Shamananda, uh, the, the student of Jiva Goswami, then uh, even back in his sort of regular human form, he found that on his forehead, the impression that Radharani had made was still there. Uh, it was the impression of Tilak and in the center, a uh, like a dot. Tilak on the forehead, not on the nose, just on the forehead. We'll show you in uh, a minute or so. This... Uh, became permanently imprinted there, even on the forehead of Shamananda. And then, amazing thing happened. Srimati Radharani handed a beautiful deity of Shamsunda to Lalita Devi and told Lalita, Give it to Kana, give him to Kanaka Manjari. So here's Lalita Devi, who uh, wears clothes <laughs> which uh, have the color and the pattern of a peacock's tail. Lalita Devi is handing over this little original Shamsunda deity from Radharani to Kanaka Manjari, Shamananda. And you know what? There is that original little Shamsunda deity right in the center. He's still there in the Radha Shamsunda temple. When you visit there next time, you'll see the big deities we saw just some minutes ago. Uh, extremely nicely worshipped and dressed and decorated, etc. And then on our right, on our right of them is this small deity. He, he's maybe, I don't know, what would you say, 30 centimeters, 25 or something, maybe not even that tall. And next to him is Radharani, to, to my knowledge, also given by Mother Janava. But no, that but it may not be correct. And for those who feel that worship of Ladu Gopal is not in our Sampradaya, then just to our left of Shamsunda is Ladu Gopal. And and they also, they look after this little Shamsunda so nicely. Uh, here's a few more photos. Isn't he just amazing? And well, actually, yeah, that's this is the Shamananda Tilak. Actually, it does go onto the nose. It goes onto the nose but not, not in the way that our tilak appears on our noses. You know, we have the tulsi leaf. Uh, here, well, this, this, this is the marking from the uh, ankle bells of Radharani. And Shamananda Prabhu, now he had this permanently fixed in his forehead. And there's a whole story of what happened next is that Hridai Chaitanya living in Ambikakalna, which is not far from Mayapur, it's just, just past Navadweep town, going down to the south along the Ganges, it's, I don't know, 20, 30 kilometers down. Uh, yeah, so Ridai Chaitanya was there, and he heard that now your disciple, Shamananda, 
has adopted a new tilak. He's not wearing the normal Gaudiya Vaishnav tilak that, that the rest of us wear. And uh, we think, the devotees told Riddai Chaitanya, we think Jiva Goswami has reinitiated him. <laughs> you know, this sort of thing happens sometimes. <laughs> oh, Krishna, I don't want to talk about it, but it happens sometimes. So, yeah, this was the rumor that that Jiva Goswami has reinitiated re uh, Shamananda and given him a new tilak. And, you know, this is like a big offense to Riddai Chaitanya. I mean, in general, it's just a big offense. So Riddai Chaitanya became extremely disturbed. And you know what he did? He came all the way to Vrindavan and challenged Srila Jiva Goswami and challenged Samananda that what are you doing? What have you done? And they both, Jiva Goswami and Samananda, they both said, no, no, no. Nothing like that's happened at all. This building here, this is the Samadhi of Shamananda. Let's just drop in for a moment. There's his Samadhi deity inside that Samadhi building. And then outside, this is where they say he received the Tilak from Radharani. And there is the tilak on the back of the that asana there. So anyway, Riddai Chaitanya, oh, he was really disturbed and accusing that what have you done? And both Jiva and Shamananda said, no, no, no. We have not done anything. This is from Radharani directly. But Riddai Chaitanya was not satisfied. So he said, all right, I'm going to try to wash it off. I'll try to wipe it, the tilak off. If it won't come off, then I'll accept that it's from Radharani. So he got some cloth and water and whatever, and he wiped and wiped and tried to take the tilak off Shamananda. It wouldn't come off. It didn't come off. So after great effort, after great effort, uh, Riddai Chaitanya understood that now I've committed an offense. I've committed an offense. So he'd offered obeisances to Srila Jiva Goswami and begged forgiveness. And he offered obeisances to his disciple, Shamananda, and, and begged forgiveness from him. And this all happened here. You know, unfortunately, I can't read uh, Bengali properly. So, you know, I can't... Uh, really make out what it says, Shri something, Shri Shri, something Radha, something, something. Anyway, so that's the story here. Very wonderful. So now, devotees, <coughs> we're taking just a little walk across Vrindavan town a little way, not so far. Uh, you can walk through Loi Bazaar and then take a left and anyway, just make your way through. Or you can go down and take a right and go past the Mirabai temple. That's an interesting temple. Then Shaji and then around uh, 
around Niduvan, plus past the Jagannath Das Babaji uh, Sadbuja temple, and then you come in front of Radha Raman, but we're not going to Radha Raman right now. In a few minutes, we'll go to Radha Raman. Here we are in front of the main entrance of the Radha Gokulananda temple. It's just down from the Radha Raman temple. You just take a left. You go 100 meters or something. It's on your right. And here is the original. The Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> the original Gokulananda and various other deities. Let's just have a look here. Now, Gokulananda is the small deity of Krishna on his own uh, at the bottom, bottom center, just uh, slightly to the left. Very small deity. That, that is Gokulananda. Now, Gokulananda is not one of the ancient deities. Gokulananda was installed and worshipped by Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur. On our right, down on the lower level, center, you can see a square Govardhan Shila. This was the Govardhan Shila worshipped by Lord Chaitanya himself. And then he gave it after worshipping the, the Shila for three years. He gave the Shila to Raghunath Das Goswami. And we'll have a closer look in a, just in a minute or two. And then we'll explain how Lord Chaitanya worshipped that, that beautiful Govardhan Shila. Otherwise, let's... Uh, so here... Here is Gokulananda. You know, somehow or other, some days, nor normally they would use conch shell eyes, but some days they don't. Some days they do, some days they don't. So anyway, this is little Gokulananda, very beautiful, but without his conch shell eyes. But don't worry, he can still see you. <laughs> he is watching us all. Gokul Ananda. And here, you know, back back to the main altar, the whole altar, uh, these deities, the bigger deities at the back, they're also uh, important. On the left, on our left, this is uh, Lord Chaitanya. Actually, it's... It's a Pratibhu deity of Lord Chaitanya. The original deity is in, uh, what's the name of the forest? Um, oh, anyway, the original deity, it's all, just on the road to Varshanda. What's that? Kadiavan, Kadiavan. So, in Kadiavan, the original deity of Naratan Das Thakur is there in, in a little temple right by a kund <clears throat> in Kadiavan. Then in the center, the, these are Pratibhu deities of Radha Vinod. Uh, <clears throat> Radha Vinod were worshipped the original deities, we'll be seeing them in a minute or a couple of minutes or so, a few minutes. They were worshipped by Lokanath Goswami. Uh, and then the, the biggest deities on our right, this is Radha Vijay Govinda, uh, worshipped by Baladev Vijayabhushan. Yes. So nice deities, nicely looked after, and very nice pujaris, very friendly pujaris. 
<clears throat> so this is Radha to Pratibhu deities. And this is Vinod himself. Lord Chaitanya. So here we see the Govardhan Shila of Lord Chaitanya. <clears throat> and uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita gives very, very nice description of how Lord Chaitanya would, would worship this Govardhan Shila. Very, uh, very beautiful description. There it says that uh, Lord Chaitanya, he uh, would hold the deity to his heart and cry tears of ecstasy. He would uh, he would bathe, bathe the Sheila. He would bathe the Sheila with his tears of ecstasy. And he, then after bathing the Sheila with his tears, he would hold the Sheila to his heart and just repeatedly say, uh, this is the son of Nanda Maharaj. This is the son of Nanda Maharaj. So like this, yeah, Lord Chaitanya worshipped this Govardhan Shila and, and then after three years, he handed the Shila over to Raghunath Das Goswami. And uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita also explains what Lord Chaitanya told Raghunath Das Goswami how to, to worship the Govardhan Shila. He said, offer him, uh, decorate him with a necklace of gunja, uh, gunja beads, and uh, offer him a tulsi manjari with some leaves and, and a big manjari with seeds, and offer him eight uh, milk sweets. And this is how you worship this, this Sheila. So the Sheila's there on the altar in the Radha Gokulananda temple. And Lord Chaitanya, he would massa, he would cry tears of ecstasy, which would soak the Sheila. And while he was uh, crying like that, he would massage the, the Sheila with his right thumb, and he would massage the, the Sheila so firmly that they say that his thumb made this impression in the middle of the Govardhan Sheila. Wow, very, very sacred. Now, just in the grounds, in the grounds of the uh, Radha Gokulananda temple, there is this Samadhi, they call it Samadhi Garden. This is the Bhajan Kutia and Samadhi of Lokanath Goswami. He lived here, at least on the spot, in, in just a very simple little hut. And he left his body here. And then his only disciple, Naratam Das Thakur, uh, put him into Samadhi here. So his transcendental body is just down uh, beneath this little structure here. And this is the Samadhi of Srila Naratam Das Thakur. 
And his main disciple, one of his main disciples, uh, was Ganganarayan Chakravati, very great devotee. Let me just tell you a story about Ganganarayan Chakravati and Naratam Das Thakwa. It, it's a good one. Listen to this. Naratam Das Thakwa, he was uh, in sort of Van Ashram terms. He was a Kshatriya from like a, a real Kshatriya family. His brother was the king of the area where they were born and brought up, where they lived for their, their youth. Uh, yes, that's the area. It's now it's in Bangladesh. It's called Keturi. So, uh, but Naratan Das became such a great transcendental devotee that even Brahmins would come and surrender to him and become his disciples. And in those days, the, uh, the caste system was much stronger than it is now. It was just like super rigid, super rigid. So it was not appreciated by the caste Brahmins when Naratam Das Thakwa would give initiation to other caste Brahmins. And they would surrender to him and offer their dandavats to him. He would accept their obeisances. He wouldn't bow down to them. Uh, so the caste Brahmins got really envious. And therefore, one big caste Brahmin scholar, uh, he, uh, he decided to come with his whole team of Brahmin disciples, all like real Brahmin scholars, he decided to come to Keturi and debate with Naratam Das and defeat him and show the world that, you know, don't take these Kshatriyas too seriously. We Brahmins, we are the real thing. So they, they were coming and the word, word reached the town before this... Uh, this caste Brahmin arrived. Word reached the town. So Ganga Narayan Chakravarti, who was from one of these big Brahmin caste Brahmin families, but, but he had become a disciple, a very surrendered disciple of Naratam Das Thakwa. Uh, he gathered some other Brahmin disciples of Naratam Das, and they went out to the edge of the town on the main road where these other people were going to be coming in on. And uh, they, they, there were some little shops there. And these Ch Ganga Narayan Chakravati and his associates, they knew the shopkeepers. So they asked the, asked the shopkeepers, can we take over your shops just for a little while? special leela is going on. So they took over the shops and then in came this caste Brahman and his puffed up Brahman students. And the big caste Brahman asked Ganga Narayan Chakravati, you know, who had disguised himself like some ordinary little fellow, little shopkeeper. He asked him in simple Bengali, where's Naratam Das? And Ganga Narayan answered in perfect Sanskrit, why do you want to know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, of course, the little shopkeepers, they never spoke Sanskrit at all, just simple village Bengali. So the Brahmin was shocked. And Naratam Das, I mean, uh, Ganga Narayan asked him, you know, why do you want to meet him? And the fellow said, well, I want to debate with him. And Ganga Narayan said, what do you want to debate about? And the fellow explained, and a debate arose right there between Ganga Narayan disguised as a shopkeeper and this puffed up Brahmin. And the other shopkeepers who were all 
Brahmin disciples of Naratam, they started speaking in Sanskrit to the other, the students of that big scholar. And they all got totally defeated. The big scholar and his students, Ganga Narayan and the other Brahmin disciples of Naratam defeated them totally. And in the end, they're just so embarrassed. And they ask Ganga Narayan Chakravati, where did you learn the Sanskrit? Where did you learn this philosophy? And Ganga Narayan and his, and his associates said, we learned everything from Naratam Das. <laughs> you wait till you meet him. So, but they didn't want to wait. They left. Yeah, they, they could see they didn't stand a chance. Anyway, yeah, that was his uh, samadhi. This is Srila Vishnu Chakravati Thakur's samadhi in that same samadhi garden. Right. Now we've made a quick trip to Jaipur. We're now in Jaipur. And this is the original Radhavinod of Lokanath Goswami. Uh, little Vinod, he's small. He's small. This may actually make him look a little bigger than he really is. Uh, Lokanath, Lokanath Goswami was staying at uh, one Kishori Kund. Actually, there's a lot of Kishori Kunds in Vraja. But he was staying in the one which is near, in Kadiavan. In Kadiavan. And he really wanted a deity because he and Lokanath, they had come together on the direction of Lord Chaitanya before the six Goswami. They were the first to come. So, so they, Lokanath and Bugaba, yeah. So Lokanath wanted a deity. And one day, one village boy just walked up to him and just gave him this deity and said, here, he, wa he wants to be with you. Bang. And off he went. And Lokanath was just stunned. And he asked the deity, how can I serve you? And Vinod said, I'm hungry, feed me. <laughs> so Lokanath prepared a nice boga offering for him. Uh, and then his practice was, Lokanath Goswami's practice was that he had a bead bag, a little, little bigger, not too much bigger, but a little bigger than our regular bead bags. And he would carry Vinod in the bead bag and massage the body of Vinod while chanting Japa. This is special Japa program. That, so that's how he would worship Radhavinod. And now they're in Jaipur, in nice temple, small temple, but very nice, and also very nice pujaris. So now devotees, oh, and this is another little, this is Govardhan Shila and, some, and Shalagram Shila, also there in that temple. So now, oh, look, now back to Vrindavan town. And here we are having darshan of Radha Raman. Radha Raman. Uh, very popular, extremely popular, and very beautiful deity, and, and very nicely worshipped. A little, the clothing and so on generally is a little simpler, than, than Radha Sham Sunda, but still very nice. And on the right, uh, on our right, uh, there is Srimati Radharani. Can you see her? Well, if you can see her, you've got transcendental eyes. 
because she's not visible to normal human vision. But they do keep her clothes there and, and a nice crown and a little jewelry, as we can see. And they garland uh, those things because it's understood Radharani is there, even though we cannot see her. Yes, so this is the last of the temples that we're going to be visiting in our Parikrama. Uh, it's the seventh of the seven main, like original temples of Vrindavan. And here we are now. We're just rolling up, uh, going, going to have darshan of Radharaman. Sri Radharaman Mandia. You know, where the devotees are just entering, going up a couple of stairs and entering, uh, if you turn left, you can see there's a couple of, of men just walking by a blue door to the left of our devotees. If you walk down there about 100 meters on the right is the Gokulananda temple where we, we just were. So, but now in we go. Uh, and just to our left, just to our left, as, as we enter, it's actually like 10, 10 meters to the left. Once you've climbed the stairs and you're just over the stairs, if you turn left, then you find Gopal Bhatta Goswami's Samadhi. Uh, which you can also enter off that main street where those those two men were walking. We just pointed out just uh, a few meters in the direction of Gokulananda. This is the place where uh, Radha Raman manifested to Gopal Bhatta. Lord Chaitanya actually instructed Gopal Bhatta because they, they had association. And Lord Chaitanya instructed him, go to Nepal, go to the Gandaki River and get some Shalagram Shilas and worship the Lord in the form of Shalagram Shila. So that's what Gopal Bhatta did. It's a bit of a long story, but eventually he came back here and he was staying here and worshiping I think it was about nine or something like that, Shalagram Shilas. But in his heart, he really wanted to, to worship a, uh, you know, like sort of obviously personal form of, of Krishna as his associates, Sanatan Goswami, Rupa Goswami, and others like them, were, were already worshipping. In fact, he was thinking, I want a deity who has the hips of Madan Mohan, the chest of Govinda, and the face of Gopinath, the best of all three. <laughs> so he was praying like that. And one day, a, a wealthy devotee came by and gave him some beautiful cloth and told him, uh, use, this, use this for your deity. Uh, but Gopal Bhatti, he only had the Shalagram Shilas, they're basically rocks. And he didn't want to disappoint the devotee by saying, you know, I don't really have that sort of deity. I'm just worshipping Shalagram Shila. So, but, so he accepted the cloth. But then he was praying that that night he was pray, praying to the Lord, please manifest yourself in such a form like we said. The hips of Madan Mohan, the chest of Govinda and the face of Gopinath. And sure enough, that night, his biggest Shila, it was a Damada Shila, big one. Uh, it transformed into Radharaman right here. And so this is the appearance place of Radharaman, which is just 
in between the main sort of walkway up to the temple and uh, and the samadhi of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. You have to take that left and then you'll see these things. Uh, here we just stopped off. This is the samadhi of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Nice samadhi, nice devotees. And here, a little difficult to make out, but right in the center are the other Shalagram Shilas of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. At least this is what they tell us. These are the other Shalagram Shilas. Okay, so now uh, we go into the temple. Let, let's get some garlands to offer to, uh, to Radharaman. Then on we go, and here we are. There's Darshan. So let's go up closer and have nice Darshan, Raman. Oh, isn't he such an outstanding character? The hips of Madan Mohan, the chest of Govinda, the face of Gopinath. Some actually say the hips are Madan Mohans. That's, that's always there. Some say the chest is the chest of Gopinath. And the face is the face of Govinda. But anyway, one way or the other, he is like a combination of the best features of those, those other three main deities. So there he is. He's just been massaged with, with fragrant oils and, and maybe with ghee. Yeah, now if you look closely, in his mouth, you may be able to make out a couple of little teeth. Yeah, not easy to see. Sometimes you can see them. Sometimes you can't see them. <laughs> there you can, you can just make out. Isn't he just such? This is sort of like he's in a, a, a more of a sporty mood, perhaps. Something like that. Here, well, you can hardly make out. A little bit you can make out teeth in, on the left side. Wow, Radha Raman. Oh, Hare Krishna. Look at that. Isn't that just amazing? So very sweet deity, very popular deity. And Srila Prabhupada appreciated how they, they worshipped him. And they even said we could learn some of the worship from the Pujaris there at Radha Raman. And this is a Govardhan Srila from by the altar there somewhere. And devotees. I think this is the end of our parikrama to the seven main original temples. To our darshan, Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you so much, Maharaj. The story of Shamananda is just wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> and and uh, I, I, you know, I'm not an advanced devotee, but I'm just wondering his response to Lalita that instead of you know, she, Lalita herself is asking, please give me these, I'll take them back. But he was so bold in his service that he said, no, I, he said, no, basically to Lalita and said, I, I'd like to take them. So I, I, I think we have to be bold in our service. I mean, this is, uh, this is one of the imports of that, isn't it? It is. It definitely is. Sure. 
We've got to be bold in a humble mood, but we've got to be bold for Krishna and for Radharani. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. These have been wonderful three days. Uh, just just the best way to start uh, Kartik. And I'm sure that all of our audiences are just very, very much appreciating your time. So thank you so thank much. You very much. Glorious to Srila Prabhupada, Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Jai.